Since 2018, I've taken part in Plastic Free July, a month-long challenge to cut out single-use plastics like cups, cutlery, plastic wrap, and plastic bags. And for the first few years, I truly felt that my actions were making a difference for the planet and the ocean. Then the pandemic happened and changed all of our lives in unimaginable ways. As a sustainability producer, I couldn't help but notice the immense amounts of PPE that had become an inextricable part of life, like the plastic masks, plastic gloves, plastic dividers in every restaurant. And while I'm grateful this plastic kept us safe and saved lives, seeing the immense amounts of waste during the pandemic left me feeling like all my work to raise awareness about plastic pollution these past few years went completely out the window. But. I also simultaneously understood that some plastic is necessary and needed in our society, especially when it's saving lives. So as we enter July 2021, I want to know, is it still worth it to take part in Plastic Free July? Can individuals really make a difference when there's so much plastic taking over our world? To find out, I decided to connect with Rebecca Prince Ruiz, who I spoke with three years ago when I first attempted Plastic Free July. I'm Lucy Biggers, and this is One Small Step. When thinking about plastic pollution, there are two numbers that put the scale of the problem into perspective, 40% and $200 billion. 40% is the amount by which plastic production is expected to grow by 2030, and $200 billion is the amount of money the petrochemical industry has invested in plastic factories since 2010. When I read those numbers as an individual, part of me wants to just throw in the towel and say, hey, you know what, plastic? You won. But at the same time, I know plastic has to be reined in. For our ocean, which sees 8 million tons of plastic enter it every year, for climate change and the fact that if plastic production and use grow as currently planned, by 2030 emissions from plastic production would be equivalent to the emissions released by more than 295 new coal-fired power plants. We cannot let that happen. Rebecca Prince Ruiz is the founder of Plastic Free July and the executive director of the Plastic Free Foundation. In 2011, she challenged herself and a couple of friends to go plastic free for a month in her home city of Perth, Australia. Since that first year, Plastic Free July has grown consistently. The last year, there were 326 million people around the world taking part and doing their bit to make a difference. Those numbers are like leaving me speechless. That is so amazing to hear 300 million people are participating even during a global pandemic. Like that must just feel so good to know that you started this movement. I feel really like proud and amazed and impressing, just grateful for everyone who has taken part and made a difference last year. We, you know, did consider, should we do Plastic Free July? Should we even run it in 2020? With, you know, the pandemic affecting people in so many different ways. But what we found from talking to people is that when things were out of our control, we could have control on something and it was our own behaviours. And I also think that one thing we learned from the pandemic is how these systems are influencing our lives so much and, you know, giving up a straw or a cup, like, that feels really good. I kind of am like, how does that then like connect to higher level changes? Changes happening at the government level, the industry level. So together last year, people participating in Plastic Free July reduced uh, their plastic consumption. And this is plastic that was avoided in the first place by 900 million kilos. And so I think this behaviour change and our own action is really important. That behaviour change leads to that spread of ideas that can start to shift the social norms and, and change our community expectations of business and government. So I do think that behaviour change is the seed of cultural and system change. What are some of those things that you've noticed that are different from even like 10 years ago when you started this? When, when we started back in 2011, it was hard to even find the solutions that you could purchase. And now you can buy them pretty much in mainstream stores and supermarkets. So at the consumer level, you can see the changes and get access to solutions. There's lots of bulk food stores, packaging free stores that have opened, plastic bag bans that have been introduced, a growing number of container deposit schemes. 
So we have increasing numbers of large multinational corporates that are taking on the challenge and not just uh, doing plastic free July as an employee engagement piece and getting all of their staff on board, but also really looking at their operations and their supply chains and how do they remove single use plastics. A recent study found that just 20 corporations are responsible for over half of plastic production. So influencing them with our purchasing power is a great place to start. And companies seem to be taking note. For example, the multinational consumer goods company Unilever has committed to, quote, eliminate problematic or unnecessary plastic packaging by 2025 and move from single use toward reuse models where relevant by 2025. And 30 major corporations have signed a petition calling for a UN treaty on plastic pollution. Well, signing a treaty and making vague commitments by no means absolves these companies from being big polluters and producers of plastic, I do think it's a positive sign of progress. The fact that these companies are even acknowledging plastic pollution is proof that consistent collective pressure has gotten through to them, or at least their marketing departments. Progress is also happening on the government level. The EU is banning or restricting the 10 most popular single-use items found on beaches. And in the US, the proposed Break Free from Plastic Pollution Act would include a temporary pause on new and expanded plastic production facilities. What's one small step that you think people can take to really engage with this problem? Just choose one thing that you're gonna do. And maybe your one thing is to have a conversation. Maybe your one thing is you're gonna re always remember that reusable water bottle in July. Maybe your one thing is refusing the straw. Maybe your one thing is signing the petition for the Global Plastics Treaty. It's World Wildlife Fund's biggest ever uh, petition. And let's together start to turn this thing around. If you want to take part in Plastic Free July this year, consider tackling the top four items people use. Plastic bags, approximately 500 billion used globally each year. Plastic water bottles, approximately 481 billion used globally each year. Plastic straws, 8.3 billion pollute the world's beaches. And disposable cups and lids, 500 billion used globally each year. All of these items are simple things most of us can pass on, and giving these up won't cost you any money. In fact, it will save you money. They're easy sacrifices, and I think a great place to start. Here's the thing. Plastic Free July isn't just about plastic. It's about becoming part of the sustainability movement and a first step to take responsibility for your consumption and impact on the planet. But not just stopping there. Saying no to plastic is the first step to holding corporations and governments accountable and creating lasting change on a systemic level. Don't get me wrong, corporations and governments are the ones who need to step up and create change at the scale we need to see. But I truly believe taking a first step in your personal life is a great way to start getting involved. This month, I'm sharing a second video on plastic. I learn how fracking expansion in the US is connected to an increase in plastic production and speak to a fracking refugee who was forced from her home due to health impacts from fracking wells in her community. At first, you know, you would notice a burning in your nose and then headaches and terrible neck aches, um, nausea. I was forced from my home due to the air pollution from 78 fracking wells, a compressor station that had been in significant and ongoing violations of the Clean Air Act, pipelines, uh, transfer stations, um, all within a five mile radius of my home. Look for that later this month and let me know in the comments. Do you think that Plastic Free July is still worth it? Thanks. Bye.